I joined the Air Force um, because it was something that I just always knew I was going to do. It was more I was always going to join the military and I just had to figure out what branch. I grew up around the military. My dad was in the Army for 24 years so that lifestyle just seemed very familiar and comfortable. And then I picked the Air Force just simply for the quality of living versus the other branches. So I've been in two years now. I am an A1C. I am going to be up for promotion pretty soon for senior airmen. I am technically a munitions specialist, which is a 2WO, but it's more commonly known as ammo. I unfortunately signed an open contract, open mechanical, and ended up not finding out until the end of BMT. And I will say from my experience, I don't recommend that. I know people say they don't recommend it, but I wanted to get out of our small town. You don't know what you're gonna get. And I know that's all over YouTube telling you not to do that. And I still did it because I just wanted to get out of Dodge. So when I found out, I really didn't know because I had no clue what it was. Um, someone said, oh, you're an ammo. And they kept saying, if you ain't ammo, you ain't. And I had no clue until I got to tech school and I asked the tech school instructors what ammo was and they asked how I got to this job. I originally on my list, I forget what it's called, um, but the list of all your jobs that you put in when you sign an open contract that you'd like to have or that you're waiting on, all of them were crew chief jobs. I wanted to work on planes. However I could, I wanted to work on planes. And what's ironic about that is the job I have isn't even weapons, it's ammo, so I don't touch planes at all. I signed a six-year open mechanical contract. So tech school is at Shepard Air Force Base. The length of tech school is, I believe, like 32 days or so, but I went, so I was there for like two months, but part of it was because we had almost 14 days of what they call like exodus, where we went home for the holidays. To sugarcoat it, I hated it. I absolutely hated it. But you do have to remember too, some of this may have to do with your experience based on male or female. I feel like it's a commonly known thing that females don't interact as well together when there's a big group of them. It just seems to happen. There's just a lot more conflict and pettiness. I noticed that in basic and I stayed out of most of it. You just kind of get pulled into people's drama and it's super obnoxious. Plus I had two other roommates in tech school so we we're kind of jam-packed and Shepard in the winter is just not a fun place to be. Plus I was still super upset about getting the job that I did because I realized I didn't like it and that obviously is going to negatively affect your opinion on your experience in tech school if you don't like the job you're studying for. But overall, like how they taught you and stuff, that wasn't really bad. We didn't have hardly any homework. Tests were super easy. Like I only think one girl in our whole like flight for ammo failed, I think, one test. And she retook it and she was fine. So our stuff is super easy as well. So I, with ammo, can pretty much be stationed wherever. Certain bases are going to require a higher clearance than others. But pretty much wherever there are planes, training, equipment, anything that you're going to need ammo, they have positions. Even security forces obviously needs ammo because there's things called custody accounts that you have to manage along with like at our base we have border patrol. So there's custody accounts for that. What else are there? They're pretty much anywhere that you could possibly need any sort of ammunition, you're going to have ammo it may not be as high of ranking. So any base that you're at, you're gonna have ammo. I haven't even really heard of a base that does not have an ammo position, but your rank is gonna depend though on which bases you can go to with ammo because there are a lot of bases when they're smaller and they require basically more effort because you're managing more stuff at one base. There's a lot of bases that you can't go if you are below a tech sergeant. I know I've been told Randolph Air Force Base is one example of that. Um, that was just one that got brought up at work one day. Um, you can't go there unless you are, I believe, a tech sergeant or higher because there are special things you have to do and they don't really teach that to you or want lower ranking people to do that. 
so basically it's more of a logistical job but it also depends on what shop you're in so there are a bunch of different shops within our ammo flight we're broken up into three different groups and then within those groups they have the different shops so it goes like our flights are groups and then our shops and i was most recently in line delivery um, which is extremely logistical because we're not doing any maintenance on munitions we basically pick up the trailer make sure that it's tied down correctly with all the munitions on it and tow it to the flight line but there's also like the missile shop there's storage there's conventional maintenance control afk there's basically different shops that do different things so we have like combat plans afk those are more officey jobs control is very logistical as long with line delivery and then we have like conventional pgm storage those are definitely going to be more maintenance of the munitions and building tearing down munitions. I think you should want to expect you're going to be hot and sweaty or cold all the time. Whatever your weather's like, you're going to be outside in that weather. So if you don't want that, definitely don't take this job. I don't have an issue with that, but I know some people complain about it all the time. I'm stationed in Arizona and it's super hot and it's hot and sweaty and just not fun in the summer, but that's part of the job. Basically expect that you're going to be uncomfortable because you're working outside all the time. If you are in line delivery or control, you're not gonna get lunch breaks. You're gonna work straight eight, nine hour shifts. And if you're working 12s, you're gonna work a straight 12 hour shift. You don't have a break because the flight line doesn't stop for us. You still have to support the line. That's what we always say. So going to events, going to PT, your priority is to support the line. So just know that you are basically waiting on the flight line and whatever their demands are. If you're in like the other shops where it isn't based off the flight line, you're just tearing down building up munitions, um, expect a lot of crazy. People are super intense about ammo. If you say you don't like ammo, people will definitely look at you funny. There's a lot of morale in ammo. That being said, the morale definitely dies off in line delivery because we don't get to participate in the same things that everyone else does, but there's a lot of activities that they try to invite you to. They want to bring everyone together. Um, we do a lot of cookouts. They go drinking a lot. There's just a lot of camaraderie with ammo, hence the if you ain't ammo, you ain't. That's just their thing. They teach you that in tech school because they just want to be this big happy family. Typically we work 40 hours a week. Um, if there's a lot going on, we may work like 50 just because we end up kind of needing the extra help in between shift change. And then if we're working an exercise, it's usually 12 hour days straight for two weeks. But those we only do a few times a year and it also depends on your base, um, how often you do those. So there's not a ton that does transfer into the civilian world. And if you do get into that job, and you kind of need some help with it, Supervision's a great resource to talk to to help you figure out what transfers, um, because I was recently talking with this um, with our shop chief, and basically the information I got was learning how to drive a forklift. If you get certified on that, that transfers over super well, and then any sort of logistical warehouse job, um, because we're managing the transportation of munitions. So for example, I was dispatching recently. I'm dispatching drivers from the MSA, uh, the munition storage area, to the flight line, which means I am essentially making sure in a logistical way that this thing gets from point A to point B. So pretty much anything that requires some sort of logistical experience, um, but certification wise, there's not a whole lot unless you're gonna do the same thing that you're doing, but as a civilian like contractor. So it pretty much just comes down to your forklift training and then you're dealing with hazardous stuff. You have to keep up with your yearly safety training for munitions transportation of them, safety, all that stuff, but it comes down to the experience, not the certifications as much so. So I know it does vary from base to base, but overall it's pretty much six months on, a year and a half off, and they do have deployments in between there that you'll go with like rescue squadrons for like four months at a time instead of six months, but then you're just going um, with maybe two other people instead of an entire, pretty much the whole flight going. My specific situation, I've had some health issues come up and 
my job is very flexible um, when it comes to that stuff. So I am glad that I'm in the job that I am, just simply for the fact that it has allowed me to also deal with my health specifically. But if that was in better condition and I could do anything else, I would. It's also extremely hard to cross train out of ammo. Everyone just should know that right away. You can't specifically just cross train because we're so low manned that it's actually considered critical manning. So if you don't like the job, you can't just think, oh, I'm just gonna cross train because there's a very low chance of that. But that's just a side note you should know about ammo right now because they've been critically manned for years. If I could do anything else, I still really would like to try a crew chief job, but I'm just kind of middle ground right now with my job. Um, I super hated it before. Now I'm just coming to kind of accept it that this is my job and I just go about my business and do my job. And I just look at it as a job because that's the only way that you can really get through something that you don't like is this is what I'm doing. This is what I've been assigned to do. I'm here. I just need to do my job and earn my paycheck. Um, in ammo, there's a lot of drinking. Um, it's just part of their culture. And it's not overall like the Air Force culture, it's just ammo culture. That's what they wanna do. Don't underage drink. There's no reason to. Don't get caught doing dumb things. I know we have people get caught getting in trouble for basically being dumb and doing what you're told not to do. Don't do that stuff. And don't feel peer pressured by other people within your career field to go and party with them. You know what? Go be the DD. Like, I've done that plenty of times. People will call me at midnight when they're out and about downtown. They'll be like, hey, can you give me a ride? Cool. Be that person that picks them up. Don't be that person that gets caught underage drinking. I hope this information helps. If you want to check out my YouTube channel or Instagram, that'll be linked down below. Thanks for watching.